it's in my, I think it's in my family. Uh, my father was a pilot. I've always wanted to be a pilot since I was a young kid, so I just uh, pushed on and, and here I am. My father was a, an Air Force pilot, uh, served in Vietnam and the Southeast Asia when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. I did feel a lot of connection, uh, particularly when we did what was called Sandy Missions, which were a mission for, that we practiced to do uh, to cover a downed uh, airman. For instance, in combat, if an airman was shot down, Sandy pilots would go and protect him and pick him up with helicopters and stuff and, and search for him and find him and all that. And my father actually did that mission in the A-1 in Vietnam uh, in, uh, back in 1967. So when I did it and walking out and flying that same mission, doing those same kind of, that training was just, that was amazing. That was, that was a lot of, that was a big connection. I felt a big connection you know, with my father. Well, that was the thing. You know, I always wanted to be a pilot. And then is later on, my mother, after everything happened, my mother told me in no uncertain terms that I was going to have nothing to do with the military. I was not going in the Air Force. I was not going to be a pilot. And I really had accepted that for a long time, uh, that I was not going to be able to do that. And then later, when I got a little older and realized that, you know, my decisions had to be my own, um, I followed the dream, you know, that that's what I wanted to do. And I worked, like anyone, worked hard to get there, and, and it worked out. I was five years old, 1970, it was January of 1967, the last time I saw my father, I was five years old. And that was at Love Field in Dallas, Texas. We're very, I, I've been told that we're very similar personalities. We're the same build, same height, same everything. Uh, my mother always said that our hands were exactly the same. Um, so I, I hope that he would be proud of what I've done, you know. My mother and I were the only ones that got to take him to the airport. So it was me and my mother and my father and we went to Dallas Love and that, the round area in the center I remember very well. And we took him there and then um, he deployed in January and then in May is when he was shot down. And he was also a flight lead so that day they were tasked to go strike a target in northern Laos. And they flew out of Udorn, or Udorn in Thailand. Uh, it's a two ship and they flew up there, uh, circled the, the target and, and he was leading and when he rolled in immediately any aircraft, all around the aircraft and, and uh, the aircraft tumbled and spun and, and uh, crashed as his wingman is uh, trying to not get shot down himself. So. At that point, he went missing in action, so we didn't know anything about what had happened to him other than what his wingman told us and that uh, he was missing. And that went on for a long time, obviously, you know, it put us in a, it put the family in a state of limbo, you know, and, and when you're in that state of limbo and in this, in this situation or the Vietnam War, your job and your duty as a family and as a child is to have hope and to create a positive attitude and, and maintain that hope you know no matter what you hear no matter what anybody says you have to maintain that hope and as a kid what you really think is if you don't do that you're somehow going to be responsible for him being lost at the end of the war they declared him all deceased and suddenly you couldn't have hope anymore and at that point you have to as a family figure out how to heal and that's what we did you know we we tried to heal we tried to go on, and uh, without knowing exactly what had happened to him, we just continued on as a family. The Air Force, uh, there's a mortuary guy that calls you, and they, he actually warned us. He said um, they had been searching in, in my dad's crash site area, and they said, we did find human remains, so there's a chance, you know, that it could be your father, and we will know, uh, you know, and probably it was a month, I think, that, until we knew. And all, everything was taken to Hawaii and forensically discovered that, yes indeed, you know, they called us back and said, yeah, we have identified that those remains are your father's. It's a surreal experience because, you know, I, I had accepted that, that I would never see that. You know, I would never, as, you know, during my lifetime that he would come home, that it was, you know, he was lost forever there. But it's, it's an amazing thing that, that now that he's, he's coming back, you know, for the family, that means a lot to us. You know, it means a, 
means a, a whole lot to us. He deserves it. And so does every service man, every service uh, woman that, that is sent to fight for us. They deserve that. To, to know that if they go to fight, that and the worst happens, that their country won't leave them and forget them. And as Americans, we have to strive to bring those people home. They, they deserve that. And it's, it's the absolute minimum of our dedication to them, I think, that, that, that they can be confident knowing that we're going to bring them home.